Right, we're back. The last half turn before the summer break. Assuming we get a summer break, as the cat starts crunching through its biscuits. Anyway, we'll we'll press on. Um. So first thing is the yeah, last thing you did before um, we broke up for half term was you did this thing on um, um, the require practical decay of milk. Again, it's, it's almost like a, another digestion practical, really. Um, so it's no big thing that you, you've missed it. Um, it's not as if there's anything mega new about it, no kind of new techniques. Um, and by getting it done now, it frees up time next year to hopefully you know catch up things that we've um, gone through in terms of stuff that's going to be more on the exam. Anyway, uh, well done the 19 of you who did it. So there's six of you who either you know didn't do it, have got issues with internet or didn't press submit. Okay, it's the hardest thing is this is that I can set work and give like feedback but you know cajoling some of you to kind of do it and do it properly. Um, and you know, fix your internet as well is impossible. So, uh, well done those of you who've done it. I was disappointed how few watched the videos in the, into how to do it carefully and properly. Um, but I guess you know, the faster you get through the work, the faster you can get onto something that you prefer doing. Um, but again, you know, it's no pain, no gain in all this. Um, everyone in the country is in the same position. If you proper, you know, you know, you know, put the two hours into your biology a week and think about you know the homework time as well so really two and a half hours a week if you're doing that you'll beat loads of people around the country because there'll be loads of people who haven't got the internet you know are less conscientious um don't know how to press the submit button and um, their internet goes down every day there's biology set any of those anyway Let's have a look at this and see where we're at. I'm in the kitchen today, so hopefully it's not too echoey. Number three, what was the independent variable in the milk practical? Correct. Well done, 16 of you. It was, or should I say 84% of you, which is probably a better measure, the temperature of the milk. We were varying the temperature of the milk. Okay, we were putting it in water baths, and therefore, yeah, that was the independent variable. That goes on the x-axis in your graph. It goes on the first column in a table. Um, volume of lipase, that's a control variable. To keep the same each time the type of milk we keep it the same each time that's not the independent variable that's a control variable which we get to in a minute number four question oh everyone got one and two right well done as in yeah you put your names on um number four students remark that the results of the experiment might not be totally reproducible everyone got this so it's not what they're going for yeah it was it's awkward to judge how long it takes the color to disappear yeah it's it's very um, it's down to your perception. Um, uh, and if you ever get asked, asked anything like this um, about what was the main source of error, you can't ever go for human error. You can't go, well, the person might not have been concentrating. Yeah. Or well, I was a bit distracted when I was catching the rumor and therefore um, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. You, you, you have to you have to have something that even if you even if you you're proper on it, it was difficult to do. And therefore, yeah, judging when that pink disappears, um, it was actually easier on the simulator. In class, it would have been very difficult to judge because it never quite goes back to milk colour. I see it white. Um, number five, the control variable. Yes, yeah, so this is where, yeah, 14 of you got it right, 74%. The a control variable in the experiment is the temperature of the milk. No, that's the independent variable. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's correct to put false. Um, yeah, so if you put true, U5. You're wrong. So a control variable would have been, it was the, you know, it was in for, um, you know, yeah, type of milk, volume of milk added, volume of indicator added, volume of this added, everything that we kept the same. Six, the pH went higher when the fats in the milk were digested by lipase. No, they didn't. It went lower. So well done the seven of you who got that correct. People struggle with pH. Yeah, they're happy that you know, that when fats get digested, it forms an acid, fatty acids are produced. But they then think, well, that makes the pH go higher. They forget about their chemistry. But yeah, the, the pH would have gone lower. It would have become more acidic. If you get confused with pH, then, yeah, think more acidic. But it won't help you with this question. But you're not going to get any true or false questions in the exam anyway. 
Number seven, there was no reaction at 70 degrees everybody, right? Yeah, enzymes are denatured. That's good. Um, but people get confused with, with denaturing. Number eight, the reaction was slow at 10 degrees C as the enzymes were denaturing. It is false. Yeah, enzymes don't denature at cold temperatures. If they did, then you could never do an organ transplant. You know, you, you know someone unfortunately dies and they donate their organs and they pack the kidney in ice and they ship it from Leeds to Manchester and then they do an operation where they replace the kidney, well, they pop an extra kidney into someone in Manchester. By popping it in ice, it stops the enzymes from working. However, when it warms up again, all the enzymes work again and therefore you get normal kidney function. So yeah, it's um, they don't denature, just, they're just at cold temperatures, there's just not enough energy for, 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 for colliding. No, this is an unsuccessful clap. There wasn't enough energy. More energy, successful clap. Too much energy. Well, no, my hands are denatured. Chain shake, I don't get a clap. Um, I came up with that analogy a few years ago. I'm sticking with it. I think it's really good. Number nine, milk can be bought that is filtered, giving it a longer best before date. This is because the filtering removes the enzymes from the milk. This is where you can get lost in the detail. This is false. Well done, the 42% of you. It removes the bacteria. So there's bacteria in milk. The bacteria haven't got a mouth. They have to feed. They want to feed on the sugars in the milk. Therefore, they secrete enzymes and they absorb the breakdown products. Okay. Um, oh, I say, I say sugar. You know, sugars and fats as well. So they'll secrete the enzymes and absorb. Um, so yeah, the filtering removes the bacteria. Enzymes are sub-microscopic. You, you, you can't filter out an enzyme. Um, if you filter out an enzyme, you'd filter out all of the fat as well. You know, you, you need such a fine filter that nothing they get through apart from water. Um, so yeah, it's to remove the bacteria. So you know, the milk in my fridge that's been pasteurized, not pasteurized, it's been pasteurized, which means it's been heated to, I think it goes to about 70 degrees C. Um, so, you know, it's just enough to kind of like kill many of the bacteria, but there's still a few bacteria in it, hence the milk goes off eventually. Filtered milk lasts for longer because it's got less bacteria in from the start, so it takes longer for it to go off. And it really only goes off because you take the top off, bacteria get in. And then so every time you're kind of taking the top off, it, um, you're kind of re-establishing the bacteria within it. So yeah, be careful there. Filtering the milk removes the bacteria. That's where you've got, like, you've forgotten the practical. It was all about, um, yeah, enzymes, but, you know, the decay of milk due to bacteria, just that the bacteria make the enzyme. Uh, 10, you line the line of best fit. I think it should have been about 0.7. So most of you are getting that. I'll give you a 0.67. Yeah, so you know, number, whoever number five is, you know, completely wrong. Far too low for number eight. Far too low for number nine. Good, 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 good. 13, thorough. Seven, good. Far too low. Who knows? You're not giving a rate there, 140. 150 seconds is not a rate. Yeah, a rate is per second. So it needs, remember what we did that 100 divided by the time taken. So if you got about 0.7, well done. If you haven't, um, I bet you didn't watch the video that showed you how to set the graph out. Um, could be wrong. Uh, 11, everybody got right. Fats digest into glycerol and fatty acids. That's good. No one was uh, was tempted by the amino acids because they form proteins. Glucose forms starch cellulose and glycogen as we discover next year in year 11 happy that no one put carbon dioxide and then use your line of best fit this is where you know if, if you if you watch the, the video and you drew your, your graph right you should have got about 37 degrees c 38 so number eight got, got it right well done number eight whoever you you, you are and um, you did again 34 i mean uh, I am, I am assuming that the simulator gives the same data each time, so maybe it's like a random thing. I'll, I'll have to go back and check and make sure it, it gives a, a dependable set of results. So I will I will go back, but you know, 0.32 is completely wrong. Um, so you know, 
it should have been between 30 and 40. And when you did your line of best fit, you can get, you know, it'll be 30, 40, and then it goes kind of between the two, and therefore I expect it to be about, you know, high, high 30s. But I'll have to go back and check that because there's so many of you getting it wrong. I'm doubting myself there. But if you put 0.77, you're definitely going to be wrong. How do you do a degree sign? So now someone's managed to do a degree sign. I mean, I can do it in Word, but I don't know how you've done it. Maybe they did it in Word and pasted it in. Again, impressed, impressed. Yeah, the only one. So who are you, number 17? I'll, I'll find out after and send you a personal email saying how on earth did you get the degree symbol. Good. Right. Let's give you a quick intro into what we're doing today. Um, so we're, we're going to look at human population growth. OK, well, a little bit. As in, we need to be aware that the human population has grown massively over time. So X axis has got you know, dates up to 2000. This is the world population in thousand millions or billions, as I like to call it. Um, I guess they've called it thousand millions because some people think a billion is a million million, not a thousand million like like it is. Um, and you can see here that the population was really, really low, 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 low. Um, then, then we kind of invented farming and therefore that meant we have more food and therefore the population's exponentially increased ever since. There was a little dip around here that was due to the you know, Black Death um, and it's gone woof, ever since. I can show you a little more information. If you go to world population clock, this is the world current world population now. You can see it's ticking up, even though we're in like a coronavirus epidemic and there's more deaths. Than the, than the norm is, um, it's vastly outweighed by the, the births. You can see the birth number here. This is birth this year, 58.1 million births. There's been 24.4 million deaths. Um, and therefore, yeah, the population growth today, which is always shocking, yeah, 91,700 more human beings on Earth. There's been 66,000 deaths. 158,000 births. You can, you can look look at it by country here. Um, I'll zoom in a bit. Sorry about the advert. Oh, where'd it go? I've lost that. All right, there we go. Yeah, so you see China's ticking up. 1.4 billion in China. India, 1.37 billion in India. Um, yeah, so they're vastly the two biggest. Then that's the USA, Indonesia, Pakistan, Brazil, Nigeria. Again, you know, the UK doesn't make it. Are we like 67 million, something like that. So, yeah, there's a, a massively increasing world population. And therefore, we need to feed everybody. And I said that we invented farming, um, but... Um, as the population increases, we need more and more food, and therefore we need to feed these people. And therefore, we're, we're I mean, like a little silly um, animation to show this. This is Drillis Island. It's beautiful. It's Drillis Island. So this is Drillis Island. It's um, it's got it's forested, not forested near the coast because the abiotic conditions are too harsh. Because there's a salty wind that comes in from the sea. Um, Mount Hansen here. Um, the trees can't go too far up there's a there's a line where they kind of get to obviously we're in kind of like 2d mode here um so yeah they can't get higher because there's as you get higher there's less pressure in the atmosphere the gas is spread out more so there's less co2 and it becomes that it's too yeah there's not enough to support big trees because there's not enough for photosynthesis to support it and see how they, the trees change at low levels the, these like these are deciduous trees trees that lose their leaves and then as you go higher they change to these pine trees that are more resistant to frost and things so the world is population is increasing and there's no one on this so this is the beautiful and unspoiled uninhabited by humans drellis island um not real there is an ellis island but not a drellis island um, it rains this is good. So let's see what happens when humans move to the Arctic. So let's let's send some humans in. I made this plane. There we go. Look at that perspective. You know, in the distance, distance, distant. And um, here it comes into land, like planes do, just exactly like that. Um, there's another plane. Oops, they, they've crashed and died. 
very sad. Well, that's life, isn't it? You take risks in life. Anyway, um, so that what happens. So some humans have moved there, and this is what happened. I mean, and basically, this gets this gets marks and exams. Yeah. What what have they done? Well, they've chopped the trees down. They've performed deforestation. Yeah. And by removing trees, um, why have they done it? Well, they've done it for for, for buildings and for farmland, as we've gone through before. Yeah. They've left a little patch of trees here. But how long will they last? All the animals that lived in those trees and on here, obviously, there's fewer of them that can survive now. Um, and some of them may go extinct. Therefore, there could be less biodiversity. OK, you know, in this field here, they're growing crops. It might just be one type of crop. OK, um, and this isn't sustainable. This, this is what we're going to, be, going to be doing about. What are the other options for this? Because we just can't go around. Oh, we can chopping down more and more forest to get more land for farmland yeah so we're going to look at what are the alternatives are there other ways of getting food without chopping down more of the forest that's left on earth um, again um, we need the forests um, a you know just you know they're important in the climate and they do photosynthesis and they lock away carbon but so does peat and things like that um, but it's just, you know, it's just the beauty and the biodiversity. If you're, if you're into your biology and you're into, you know, the beauty of nature, then um, we're just losing it. And everyone feels sad when, you know, like an orangutan dies because um, it hasn't got anywhere to live anymore. Because we've ripped down the trees and we've planted um, was it a par palm oil. So they've replaced the diverse forest with palm oil plants to get palm oil put oil into petrol to make biofuel um, that by law all biofuel all petrol and diesel has to have so much percentage of biofuel in it and therefore um, they thought they were doing something that's environmentally friendly so we use less fossil fuels but they've caused you know the destruction of forests around the world to get palm oil to put into the fuel in the first place so again some decisions have kind of ripple effects that you don't imagine. So yeah, we're just going to look today at how we can we can get like a new, you know, you know, a, a good source of protein without chopping down trees, planting grass, grazing cattle. Um, yeah, what are the alternatives? So I shall stop there. Again, keep plugging on. Yeah, hopefully I'll see see you soon anyway. Because hopefully we'll be back maybe in a couple of weeks in whatever guys. But yeah, keep keep things going. It's really important. Um, so stop there again. If you have any problems with internet and things, send me an email. I don't know how you, how you, how you send an email if you've got no internet, but have a go. This is like me in infinity. I go on infinity. Oh.